I've used this for weeks now and I'm officially ditching my 16 inch highly specced out Intel MacBook Pro for this 14 inch base model M1 Pro MacBook Pro. <sighs> that was a mouthful. Hey guys, me here. This is the one that is so hyped that people like myself are scrolling through Reddit threads just to see other people's shipping dates wishing that that was mine. <laughs> This is the new base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. Does this live up to its hype? Yes, but how? And stay to the end for tips on which model you should get. Here are the main differences between these two on paper, mainly the M1 Pro chip versus the Intel Core i9 processor. This has 16 gigs RAM versus 64 gigs RAM. There's no more touch bar on the 14 inch. 14 inch also has a brighter display, 120 Hz ProMotion adaptive refresh rate, a better camera, the new keyboard, as well as more ports, the ability to fast charge within 30 minutes, and a much faster SSD. That's all on paper, but this is the main reason why I would ditch this for this. The incredible speed, performance, thermal management, fan management that this brings, all of that makes this a champ, a beast. Goodbye, 16 inch, you're no longer relevant. <coughs> Let me just show you guys on Final Cut because that is one of the more graphically intensive tasks that I use and that's where I noticed all the great improvements on the 14 inch. So I opened up a project file that I used to have a lot of trouble editing on the 16 inch. For this, the 14 inch took a much longer time to open and this surprised me because the 16 inch always performed worse on this project file before I upgraded to the new Mac OS. Nevertheless, 14 inch was super silent and kept the computer super cool, whereas 16 inch was getting hot and the fans were getting louder and louder. Next, I played the first part of the timeline and both computers performed very well. Very smooth, no lags, no hiccups, just that the fans on the 16 inch was through the roof. Next, prepared the project for export by changing the proxy file to original file and damn, the 14 inch took like one second and it was still super cool to touch. But 16 inch was heating up, it even hit 100 degrees and fans were already running at the maximum and you can see that circular rainbow wheel pop up. It was taking a while to process. The 14 inch is a clear winner here. When exporting the shorter 20 second project, export times were around the same, but when it comes to a larger project, like a full 4K 7 minutes project file, the 14 inch was faster. Exactly like what was advertised, speeding through my edits on this was super duper possible. But of course, this is not perfect. Final Cut did crush on me a few times. However, I no longer see that circular rainbow wheel of death anymore. And that means no more wait times. I would much rather have programs crash on me than when it hangs on me. Because when it hangs, I can't do anything on the computer except wait around or completely restart the machine. But the best thing of all guys is that this does not heat up. It actually never heat up throughout my entire use of it. It only heated up when I started charging this, but even then there was no fan noise at all. This was super silent. I love to edit on my lap. I do it a lot. And with the 14 inch, it was super possible. But with the 16 inch, um, my, 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 it would burn me. Even at the slightest task, like multitasking or some simple edits, this would start heating up, the fans would start turning, this would actually burn me. Another awesome thing about the new MacBook Pro is the return of ports. The SD card slot, the MagSafe charging and the HDMI port have made a return. They never should have left in the first place. So now you can do this and you don't need a hub or a dongle for this. Apple didn't really announce this, but I did some research. This is a UHS-2 slot, although many people seem to have expected a UHS-3 slot. But my fastest card is UHS-2, so I am very happy with this. And now we also have MagSafe. Finally, after so many years, it finally made a return. Never leave us again, you hear that Apple? Fast charging is incredible, 30 minutes and you get 50% charge. That's Good job, Apple. Good job. Still, with these additional ports, I would like to request to have more Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports. I edit off external drives, so I'm currently using all the ports. Some of my hard drives and mics are still using the old USB-A ports, and that means I still need a dongle or a USB-C hub. But that's a fix for it. I did some research. The CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 Elemental Hub is a great option to get more ports. And since it's Thunderbolt 4, ports are going to be lightning fast. 
but it's expensive, so currently, for now, my Hyper USB-C hub will do. I'll leave all the links below for you to check out. The new FaceTime camera that is sitting in this notch here is my all-time favorite. Now, guys, guys, 1080p really makes a difference. And I'm betting that there's some kind of face-moving technology inside this camera because my face looks goddamn good even without makeup. And they also do pretty well in low light. Now, the keyboards. The 14 inch has a brand new keyboard, but I don't really feel the difference between the 16 inch and the 14 inch, but the 14 inch feels really, really nice to type on. They've also removed the touch bar. I've never had a complaint about the touch bar. In fact, I actually got used to it. So now I just have to get used to this new set of shortcuts. Because now we have new shortcuts like the spotlight search, the dictation, as well as the do not disturb button. So yep, new things to get used to. Just RIP touch bar. I don't think you'll be missed much, but RIP. Next, the mic and audio. Now, the mic and audio quality on the 16 inch is already pretty good. So when they say that the 14 inch is much better, I got curious. So next, the mic and audio. Now, the mic and audio quality on this 16 inch is already pretty good. So when they say that the 14 inch is much better, I got curious. Let me know what you guys prefer, the 16 inch or this 14 inch. <laughs> Next, battery life. On this 16 inch, when I'm just relying on the battery itself without power adapter, it heats up really quickly, the fans start kicking in really early, and then the battery starts draining really fast. Whereas on this 14 inch is insanely cool, even without power adapter, and the battery lasts me a really long time. However, for fellow video editors, I would not rely on the battery if you're editing because you guys know, editing sessions can get really, really long. Next, I compared the SSD speed. 16 inch turned out to have a faster SSD speed than 14 inch, but it could be that 16 inch had a larger storage size. The larger the capacity, the faster the drive. Promotion display, yes, I do see it after a while, but it's not significantly different from the 16 inch, and it's not the main reason why I would upgrade. Plus, I use my external monitors back there a lot, so I don't really enjoy the 120 hz promotion display all the time. Finally, notch. What notch, guys? At first, I thought this would annoy me. I did not like the design at all, but this is such a beast. It's such a powerhouse that it doesn't really bother me anymore. Most of the time, if you're focused on your work, your eyes will go around here instead of up there. And if they needed the notch for the better camera, I'm all for it. Like the 1080p cam, I just love it. Plus, if you go full screen, you don't really see the notch. The notch just disappears. You don't really see it anymore. I just love this a lot. This is my go-to now. I have stopped touching this. I'm so sorry. Now, onto the tips on which MacBook Pro model you should get. I'll summarize this, but comment below if you want a separate video to learn more about this. Firstly, ditch the Intel chip MacBook Pros. Go for the M1 chip MacBook Pro because they're just so much better and it's so much more value for money. Secondly, decide on the size, 14 inch or 16 inch. Go for the bigger screen if you're going to work on the laptop a lot, especially if you multitask a lot. Using the 14 inch for a while now, I actually miss my 16 inch screen, but this has been so fast, I have really no complaints at all. 
third, the CPU, the GPU, and the chips. I know for my non-tech folks, there are small decisions now, it's more confusing. But simply put, the M1 Pro base model is already super capable. It can handle a lot of 4K video works. It's been super great for all my tasks. I am very satisfied with it. But if you guys do a lot of graphics intensive stuff like photo editing, video editing, 8K video editing maybe, or 3D modeling, I would say get a better GPU. Fourth is the memory or RAM. The higher the memory, the better for multitasking. If you like to open a lot of Chrome tabs, do a lot of multitasking, a lot of research like I do, you need this. I would suggest going for the 32 gigs RAM to future-proof your laptop. Finally, for storage, I would say get the one terabytes because the price difference between the 512 gigs and the one terabytes is not that much. But if you don't store a lot of videos or photos on your Mac, and if you don't even exceed 200 gigs on your current Mac, I would say you can just go for the 512 gig. You can definitely save some money on that. If you need more space in future, you can consider external hard drives like this T7 SSD. It's fast and it's cheaper than specking out your Mac's internal storage. And final tip, education pricing. If you're a student or you have friends or family members who are part of the education system, choose it. These Macs are going to be expensive, especially if you customize it. So do make use of the education discount. I think you get like 10% off or something. Even though they're expensive, they will last and they're worth it. This is truly the best value for power users, especially if you're using Final Cut Pro. After using this for the past few weeks, this exceeded all my expectations. It's even better than this highly spec'd out MacBook Pro 16 inch. So you don't have to spend extra upgrading this. This is good enough for a lot of creative work. For me, this is the MacBook Pro that I customize that I will be using as my personal computer. Before that arrives, I'll be using this as my main machine and scrolling through Reddit to see shipping dates. Yep. Hope this was helpful. Everything mentioned will be linked below. If you enjoyed this, hit subscribe to help the channel reach 10k subs and more. I'll be super grateful. So thank you very much. Take care, stay maintained, Cherry. Goodbye.